1937, Michigan was celebrating its centennial. The Detroit Sunday News um, presented a series of articles uh, detailing how the automotive industry shaped um, Michigan history, uh, you know, in, in the 1900s. And I'd like to share with you a story that is titled Ford Motor Rise Story of Founder. Saga began 60 years ago in Old's shop. There is no credited author on here, but it is it's really a good article. Essentially, the story of the Ford Motor Company is the story of Henry Ford, and properly, it should begin about 60 years ago when the boy Henry Ford was making his first mechanical experiments. From the time that uh, he first saw a clumsy traction engine toiling along a country road near his uh, native Dearborn, the idea of providing the world with cheap but efficient means of personal transportation was never far from his mind. We must confine ourselves here, however, to giving uh, some highlights, and as the story of Mr. Ford's early life is fairly well known to everybody today, we may skip his boyhood and take uh, as a rational point of departure a rainy midnight in early spring, 40 odd years ago, when he pushed his first car out of a brick shed that stood at at the rear of his modest home at 58 Bagley Avenue, Detroit, turned over the motor, climbed to the seat, and with only Mrs. Ford as witness, chugged the first mile of the roughly estimated 1,250 1, billion miles that the more than 25 million cars since made by him have traveled over all the roads of the world. His first car. The launching of the first Ford car is not the real starting place of the story, of the Ford Motor Company for nearly ten years, uh, for nearly ten years, were to elapse between the the building of the first Ford car and the building of the first Ford Motor Company car. In the intervening years, Henry Ford was laying the foundation for his great industrial career, in a mechanical sense, by careful ex experiment with motors materials and machinery, and in business sense, with men, <clears throat> men money, and uh, methods, 50 years have not been enough to satisfy him that he has the perfect method or the perfect car. Three years were enough to satisfy him that business, that, uh, business association with men whose chief interest in making automobiles was to make money was not for him that if he was to accomplish what was in his own mind, he must forever be his own boss. For his chief interest then, as now, was not to make money, but to make cars, not costly cars that only sportsmen or, or large income could buy, but low-priced cars that men of modest income could not afford to do without. The money, he reasoned, naturally would follow as needed. By 1903, Henry Ford had convinced enough men of the uh, soundness of his views to induce them to join his hazardous venture, and with their time, their services, or their money. The total cash investment in the company was $28,000. A few of the more timid investors, fearful of the outcome of the suit against Ford for the alleged infringement of the uh, Selden patent, which was to win... Uh, which was to win in 1911 after a long bitter fight early disposed of their holdings to Mr. Ford or his associates. They received what were then considered fabulous returns when their remaining shareholders sold their stock to Mr. Ford and his son in 1919 they received for it in addition to the fortune and dividends they had realized in 16 years more than 100 million dollars. The Ford Motor Company was a success from the outset. In 1903, in its little Mack Avenue plant, it made some 1,700 runabouts. They sold at $850 each, plus $100 for a detachable uh, tenue. The following year, it made about the same number of units, but they were touring cars and sold for $2,000 each. By 1906, orders had reached such proportions and profits were so good 300,000 for 1905, that the old Mack Avenue plant had to be abandoned. In the new plant on Paquette Avenue were built in 1907 nearly 15,000 cars, including the only six-cylinder Ford car ever made, the Model K Touring Car, which sold for $2,800, the highest price ever charged for a Ford car. 
This was the company's biggest year, and its first biggest year. More than 500 men were employed, and more than $1 million realized in profits. Then began the era of the universal car Mr. Ford had so long dreamed about, with its first uh, incarnation, the famous Model T. Between 1908 and 1927, when it was abandoned for a Model A, the company manufactured more than 15 million Model Ts. And as early as 1910, the Paquette Avenue plant had proved uh, too small, and the Great Highland Park plant, wonder of the industrial world, was inaugurated. By 1913, when the company was employing more than 15,000 workmen, more than 200,000 cars a year were being made, 28 branches had been established, and the first of the great assembly plants were in operation. Next year, Mr. Ford started the, uh, startled the world by raising the minimum wage of his workers to $5 a day. Despite this revolutionary departure and the dire predictions of competitors and financiers, business increased and prospered. In 1916, when the price of the touring car, which had steadily been reduced $50 or more yearly from 1908, was $360, nearly 800,000 cars were built, and Mr. Ford, foreseeing the eminent necessity of enormous expansion, bought the site of what is now the greatest industrial plant in the world, the River Rouge plant. In 1918, when the company was largely engaged in making war materials for the government, Eagle Boats, Helmets, Liberty Motors, Tractors, etc., production uh, declined, but in 1919 it was back to a new high, just under 1 million units. That year, Mr. Henry Ford and, Etz, and Etzel, who had joined his father in the uh, company of which, after serving a long apprenticeship, he is today the president, bought out all other stockholders. In 1921, Ford production passed the million mark, and in 1923, it passed the two million mark. That year, 140,000 men were employed in the industry and received more than $250 million in wages. And by this time, the heavier manufacturing, uh, manufacturing was being done at the, Great Red, uh, at the Great Rouge plant. In 1926, the five-day working week was inaugurated, and in 1927, when the shift was made from the Model T to the Model A, less than 500,000 cars were made, and necessary changes in patterns, tools, machinery, and equipment resulted in the shutting off of production for six months. With the Rouge plant getting into uh, its stride, more than, more than, uh, I'm sorry, the numbers blocked out in my copy, 800,000 cars were made in 1928, and in 1929, the high mark of of uh, 1923 was nearly reached. The production figures were 1,951,092 units and 162,270 workers in the Roche plant received more than $300 million in wages. Moreover, the minimum wage, previously increased to $6 a day, was upped another dollar that year. In 1931, Mr. Ford decided that the Model A had served long and honorably enough in the uh, role of the universal car, and the following year he brought out the first of the famous V8s, which, with modifications, refinements, and improvements that have been made with the uh, discovery of invention of better machinery and methods, uh, remains the popular V8 of 1937. Production of the V8, which by reason of factory changes and World Depression was only slightly more than 500,000 in 1933, has swiftly and steadily climbed. In 1935, Mr. Ford, as he, as has been his life habit, once more confounded his critics by bettering his uh, prediction, which they declared ridiculous, of making a million cars or more, and the precise figure was 1,192,724. Last year, 1936, the production was 1 million 15,591, and these figures are for Ford cars made in the United States only. And all this came out, and all this came out of the little brick shed at 58 Bagley Avenue. It still exists, that shed restored to its original state in the uh, pleasant surroundings of Mr. Ford's historic Greenfield Village, among scores of historic structures that are far more impressive in appearance. But perhaps there is none among them more significant as a symbol of modern progress. What 
are some of the things that have grown out of this tiny seedling of an industrial plant. Well, to begin with, there is the pre present industrial plant at the, uh, at the Rouge, which covers 1,096 acres and has a square foot area of more than 7,250,000 square feet. The original floor area on Bagley Avenue was 252 square feet. In other words, it was 18 feet long and 14 feet deep. One man, Mr. Ford, could do all the work required in hours off from his regular job and still find time to keep it clean. In the uh, Rouge plant, 100,000 to 125,000 men are too busy with their regular work to have time to clean the plant. 5,000 men are engaged especially for that purpose of activities that in themselves constitute industries of formidable proportions. Blast furnaces, cement and glass and salvage plants, coke ovens, steel mills, paper mills, open hearth furnaces, electric furnaces, machine shops, tool shops, locomotive and carpenter shops, trade and apprentice and training schools, hospitals, restaurants, laboratories, foundries, industries within industries. And there are scores of industries scattered about southern Michigan and factories and assembly plants and branches and sales rooms scattered throughout the United States and nearly every other country on the face of the globe. And subsidiary plants, great industries in themselves, all outgrowths of the Ford activity. That ends the article. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, subscribe and click the bell icon so you have updates uh, when new videos come out from the Dennis Morrison channel. God bless and have a great day.